for Boy Girl Podcast episode number 18. It's just me with us today. And we are going to talk about her channel and her vision for reading program. Uh, but before we jump into it, please make sure to download the Bully Girl app to have access to more episodes and Bully Breed content. Now I guess we can jump into it. Jasmine is from Brown's Friendship Fam channel in PA and is here with us today with uh, a beautiful puppy. Hi, Jasmine. Who is with you hey, today? You? Doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for finding the time to be with us today. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Who is this beautiful puppy with you? This is Remy. She's one of our productions, our most recent productions here at Brown's Friendship Band. Yeah. <laughs> she's my keeper female at the litter. Yeah, she's, she's very active. <laughs> yeah, she sees her siblings running around <laughs> and she wants okay. to leave me. <laughs> okay, uh, so we are going to start from the very beginning, Jasmine, and tell us shortly about your passion towards dogs. How did it all start? And what's the story behind it? So it actually started, um, I want to say like four years ago uh, when I was in the search for my my first female. She's right here. Say hi, Phoebe. <laughs> so Phoebe, uh, I purchased her really as a pet um, and just brought her home. And her personality and everything, just it just took it just swept me away. Um, so after having her for quite some time and just having a family member who already had a male that we purchased, I decided to try breeding. And uh, after that, it was it was over. I see. So what type of dogs do you breed and what inspired you to get involved with that particular breed? Currently just French Bulldogs. Uh, and what makes me... Uh, love them so much and what made me go with that breed is just like their personality um and then also i just love the structure of french bulldogs you have that thick bully shape but they're small and compact keep them in the house all day long <laughs> um so that was like one of my main reasons and just knowing the happiness that she brought to my family i just felt like i can do the same thing for other families yeah, that's a beautiful reason, I guess. Do you test your dogs for genetic health conditions? And yes, which we do. For? Right now, we uh we do the Embark, um, the seven seven panel test, uh, just mm -hmm. to check in for all genetic health issues, hips, eyes. Um, that goes with the puppy, home with puppies, and then um we do DNA testing also. Okay, and what do you do to socialize your dogs for the new homes and just in public or general? So puppies are socialized starting, well, from the beginning when they come home, but more so once they're four weeks. Um, I have them running around the house, uh, playing with the older dog. My, I have children at home, so they're socialized with children from day one. You know, my children help me a lot. They're really hands-on. So from the day that those puppies come home and I start whelping that litter, I have hands in, everybody's helping. Um, so I think that helps out a lot from the beginning, just for the puppies to be around people and being, you know, loved and cared for by the children. It's not something new to them when they go to their new homes. They're already, you know, used to the interaction with humans, the interaction with animals. It's nothing new to them. They play with toys all day. You know, we, I take them outside when they're able to. Once they have their shots, they get to play outside in the yard and run around also. Um, so we just, there's a lot of loving going on in here with the humans and the pets. <laughs> I see. <laughs> That's a beautiful mindset and approach for socializing them. And do you mm -hmm. keep your dogs in shape throughout the year in a particular routine? Yeah, more like more so. We uh, I like to walk them. Um, we walk them in the neighborhood, take them to park, walk little trails. I mean, Frenchies can't do too much walking, and <laughs> they get tired pretty fast. And then you're carrying them most of the time. <laughs> um, they play in the yard every day. 
try to let them out um, at least two, three times a day. They run around for like 15, 20 minutes, and so it's time to come back in. In the summer, they get in a swimming pool. They have their own little pools in the yard. So, yes, yeah, that's our daily interaction here. Yeah. Okay. And what is your favorite bloodline, Jasmine? Uh, right now, um, I love the Grinchy blood. Why is it? Uh, the look. It's just the look, the little crazy little crunchy faces and how small and compact they are. Really thick. <laughs> I, just, I just love me like a little short Frenchie. I see. What are some common misconceptions about the bully breed and how would you address to overcome them? I think most people automatically uh, see the bully breed as, um, you know, bad dogs because of maybe like where they came from, starting off with the pit bulls, they think they're aggressive, you know, um, and I totally am against all of that. Bully, bully breed is like one of the most loving dogs and animals you can have. They're, it's yeah. a misconception, you know. I think that they are just the smartest dogs you can have in your household, and, and sometimes they love you more than you even can expect. <laughs> In your opinion, Jasmine, what are the characteristics of a responsible breeder? Responsible breeder? The first thing about a responsible breeder would be that they would be educated um, and continue to educate themselves on the breed characteristics and everything that's needed from those and from us for those animals. Um, if it's one thing I love to do is just educate myself as much as I can. I'm still learning. You know, I, I don't consider myself uh, someone who knows everything about the breed. Um, I'm still watching videos. I'm still learning from other people. So one of the main things is being educated, I believe. Yeah, I believe that's the case in everything. In anything we do, we need to never think that we are like the master of it because there's always room right. for improvement. Um, yeah. Dogs are out there. Every dog is different, um, and you just have to do your research, just like anything, just to know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. Okay, what type of diets do you keep your dogs on throughout the year, Jasmine? We do a salmon, sweet potato uh, diet. I like to introduce uh, different fruits and vegetables to them on a daily basis. Um I mean, we really stick to the salmon because, you know, allergies and everything. So we stick to salmon, sweet potato, a lot of fruits and veggies. Uh, they get their little treats here and there. But um, we do the kibble, salmon, and fruits and veggies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. So it's like a pretty diet to me. Uh, are, there any <laughs> are there any specific brands of dog food that you use and recommend? Yep. Uh, puppies start on Pro Plan right from the beginning. Uh, we do Pro Plan puppies, sensitive skin, sensitive stomach. Um, as they grow, I change them to Pro Plan 3020, all life stages. That's currently what's been working for our family. And how many times do you feed your dogs? So my adult dogs get fed um, two times a day, morning and the evening. My puppies are eating three times a day currently. So morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, and evening. Where are you going? See, how many dogs currently do you have in your channel, Jasmine? Currently, we have five adults, five puppies who are going to be three months on September 4th. And I have a litter on the way. I'm actually going for a C section this Saturday. Have you it all by yourself, or do you have some people? I. So I do a lot of the work on my own. Um, my husband works full time. He's hands on when he is home. My children help me a lot with what they can help me with. <laughs> I see. So, but most of for most of the part, I'm the one that's a hundred percent hands on with everyone. I see. Okay, let's talk about the uh, the purchasing process. So walk us through the purchasing process from start to finish. So when I have a person reach out to me about the puppies. Um, I like to build, a, I would like to call it a, a friend relationship with this person um, and just get to know them um, better and just just to know where these puppies are going 
I, I don't feel comfortable just doing a transaction without knowing that person themselves. I just want to make sure they're all going to good home. Um, so we out interact with them for a while, get to know them, exchange photos of the puppies, maybe FaceTime them a few times so they can see the puppies interacting with the rest of the pups in the household. Um, we ask for a deposit to hold the pup down. Once we know that that person is a potential buyer or a good a good person, a good fit for the pup, should I say, um, we'll get a deposit down and then hold the puppy so the puppy's ready to go. And once the puppies do leave, they do leave with their shots, dewormed. I would say somewhat potty trained. <laughs> um, and uh, then, you know, the, the rest of the balance will be paid once the transaction is done and the puppies are dropped off to the owner. Okay, that's a very loving and caring approach. Do you offer yeah. any health guarantees or any support to your puppies after they get to their new homes? Yeah, we offer a one-year health guarantee. Um, and then I'm I'm going to be your friend to the end. <laughs> I'm here to for the rest of the puppy's life. So any questions? Any problems they run into, you know, anything they're not sure about, I always want them to reach out to me. I'm here to help 100%. That puppy's always going to be a part of our family, and we want the best for them. So it's like more, even if they get to their new homes, you are kind of, you know, expanding the family. And I'm still, can... yeah, I'm still here for them 24-7. I would hate um, for something to happen to a puppy that comes from our kennel, um, knowing that it could have been avoided if there was just some communication between myself and the owner. And how do you handle the returns or rehoming of puppies or even adult dogs that may not work out in the new homes? So depending on what the situation would be, um, my, my door is always open. And actually in my contract, it states that if the owner can no longer care for the dog for any reason or if, they, you know, if it doesn't work out, that dog should be returned to us. You know, there's a communication that has to happen. Um, now, if I say, well, it's fine. You know, they say, well, I'm going to give the dog to my mom or something like that. And we approve of it, then that's fine. But we want full communication. And most times the pup will just return to us. And either you will try to rehome or we will keep it if that's the case. Um, and then we'll work something out with the buyer, maybe for a future pup or something like that, depending on the situation. Okay, and does it happen often? No, hasn't happened yet. Thank God. <laughs> okay, you just have everyone's to... happy. <laughs> I see. Do you currently show any of your dogs, Jasmine? Not yet. Um, but this one right here is who we're planning on starting shows with soon, hopefully. <laughs> hey, okay. but you have to stay still. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Does it uh, take a long time to prepare them? So we we never have done any shows. Um, her dad is a show dog, so the per the person that we studied uh from he takes him to shows. Um, right now we're just gonna start training her at home. We're gonna set her up so she can start learning how to sit still and everything <laughs> that has to be done for these uh, dog shows. But it'll be very new for me, just as new as it is for her. <laughs> I see. Okay, Jasmine. What advice do you have for any upcoming? My advice? I mean, educate yourself. Everyone who, who wants to go into, you know, breeding or even just purchase a puppy as a pet, make sure you know everything you're getting into with any, like with anything, like we said before. Um, and just be ready to be having a whole new child in your house because that's what it's like <laughs> you bring one of these puppies home and it's like you have a baby yeah you have to give your undivided attention okay and um, what do you think is the most difficult thing for people in the bullying to overcome right now i think that right now it's more um a lot of competition a lot of people just want to be better than the next person um and I would hope that, you know, in the future, it turns into more of a, a union ship and people just, everybody's trying to do the same thing and we're all supporting each other, you know, because there's so much room for everyone to grow together. Okay. And how do you think uh, you and the whole community can 
overcome this thing. It just starts by communication, building friendships with everyone. And that's something I try to do. You know, I have a lot of people that I've never met face to face. But because of the bully game, because of the friendship game, I've made a lot of friends. Um, people that can help me when I've had questions, when I was new to wealthing. And, and, and I think that I appreciate it a lot because with a lot of those people, I wouldn't be as far as I am now. So who is an inspiring figure in the bully game for you? Maybe an inspiring channel for you that you, you would like to mention? Uh, I would say James from Pitfall Channel. So I met James back in 2020. We went to his kennel to purchase a mail that uh, he had. It was actually his keeper mail. Um, and we reached out to him because a family member wanted to buy a dog. Um, we went to his kennel. We actually flew down to Atlanta just to pick up the dog. So it was just an overnight uh, stay out there. Um, we picked up the mail and we were able to get a, a, a tour of his camp, um, of his kennel. And it was amazing. It was something I never even thought was possible. Um, and that was the day that I was like, this is something I want to do. Like, this is amazing. You know, he had every type of looking Frenchie that you can think of, all the colors, all the sizes. Um, and it just inspired me a lot. Uh, and so this day, I'm going to work as hard as I can. So hopefully one day have the same kind of kennel he has. Yeah. That's beautiful. Are there any other channels that you would like to talk about that you cooperate or maybe are inspired or have some goals or projects together? Um, not yet. I'm still I'm still meeting a lot of people and, and just getting our name out there. I'm fairly new. Um at the moment, you know, he's one of the people that I'm more in contact with. I've made a lot of friends, but Pitfall is where it's at. I see. Okay, you have with your plans. And speaking of the plans, tell us about one of your main goals for 2023. Right now, it was just to get get our name out there more, so people can see, you know, our purpose. I'm hoping that you know people see that I'm just trying to get these beautiful babies into wonderful homes with loving families, so that they can get the same experience that I had when I brought my first Frenchie home. Um, and and hopefully to get in and start going to these dog shows and more growing. That's what I want. This is this is what this year is a lot of growth is what I'm hoping for. Okay, Jasmine, describe how you would want things to be and to change in the bully community ten years from now. Ten years from now? Yeah. I think I just like I said, a lot of unity. 10 years from now, I would just see a lot of you know, more kennels involved with each other and doing more business with each other. More collaboration is what I would hope to see 10 years from now. Less hate, <laughs> more friendships. That's a beautiful mission, I believe, not only for dogs, but just in general for, for people. people in general. Yep. Uh, but the next question, I think the competition stays there if we are talking about markets. So, what separates your kennel from the competition, Jasmine? What do you think? Right now, I think it's because we're really family-based. It's like it's a family thing. And I think that when you're doing something with your family, um, there's a lot of love put into it. It's not all about the money. Right now, it's more about growth, you know, and just showing my children, um, like, how to have, like a structure, you know, a daily routine. And it's just like anything in the workforce you learn, you know, you have to have, you know, you have to be strong. This isn't easy. <laughs> um, so that's what I would say. Yeah, I bet it isn't easy. And I'm curious how many hours during a day, a typical day do you spend on your dog, with your dogs and puppies on the kennel in it's, general? It's, it's really crazy because being that it's something that, like, they're always home, they're in the house with us, they're, you know, so these dogs are with me 24-7. I feel like my time is always being split in between family and the dog. Um, if I'm not cooking and cleaning, I'm taking care of the puppies. If I'm not doing something with the kids, I'm taking care of the dogs, you know, so just as much time as I put into my family, I put into my kennel. Okay, so it's almost like a full-time job for you. Absolutely. 
and uh, I guess you enjoy it. That's the most important thing. So I've always loved animals since I was younger. I think if you have the love for them and the passion, it doesn't feel like you're really working. When you love your work, it's not work anymore. I totally agree. And mm -hmm. what other hobbies or interests do you have, Jasmine, that you dedicate some time to? I love to cook. Um, I'm actually a caterer. Uh, oh, I have nice. a lot of people who reach out to me when they have parties, you know, weddings, baby showers, birthdays, and I cater and I can cook. By, I do it by myself. I've catered for 200 guests on my own from my own kitchen. <laughs> um, and it's just something I love to do. I really love to cook. I love to have people over and I love to feed them. It's just, that's just one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I think good for the people around you. That's nice. Yeah. To <laughs> Absolutely. With the sort of, and I'm curious, do you cook? Do you have any special recipes for your dogs? Um, well, they love the beef and steak. I like to give them, I cook them some ground beef sometimes, mix it with their kibble, add some vegetables. Um, right now, this week, they've been loving on some blueberries and yogurt. <laughs> I like to it's offer them different things. Yeah. But if they could eat everything that I cook, they would. They just stand around me in the kitchen while I'm cooking all the time, just waiting for me to drop something. <laughs> well, they know that something is going on, yeah? Something yeah. yummy. Is They're like, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's beautiful. And maybe not for dogs, but for, for people, do you have a special recipe, a special dish? Everyone loves my rice and beans, my baked barbecue chicken, and potato salad. <laughs> okay, that's lovely to hear. Is there anything you would like to see added to Bully Girl magazine or Bully Girl magazine podcast in the future? Right now, I think you guys have it all under control. Buddy Girl Magazine has given a lot of people a platform that they need just to show, you know, where they're coming from and what their vision is. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jasmine, for being with us today. And uh, I guess that's it for, for this episode today. It's just a reminder that it's Jasmine from Brown's Friendship Fam channel with us today from Pennsylvania. And... Uh, We'll see you next time with our next guest. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.